Yes, some of these styles made you super angry, but it also gave the game variety. Call of Duty has zero variety right now. Zero. Bravo 6. Going dark. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Going Dark podcast. Chop, it's an emergency airdrop. It's episode Hello, two. Fellas. How are we feeling? We're feeling good, man. Listen, we, we got some big news on the horizon. You know what, chap? Y'all know y'all like BO2. Well, they got you. We got something coming. Uh, uh, allegedly, apparently. Allegedly. Um, allegedly. <laughs> but that, you know, Call of Duty is always allegedly, but we're going to allegedly discuss what we allegedly saw today. So um, there's been a lot of hoopla about a BO2 sequel on the horizon for Call of Duty 2025. And uh, I don't know. I, I think that brings along some interesting implications to talk about. There, there's there beyond the game itself. There's so much interesting things going on underneath the surface that I want to get into with that. Um, and, you know, that's what we're going to spend this entire time unpacking. I, How I, do you feel about it? I uh, let me just say I am so excited for this. I this episode, honestly, I didn't say this before we started recording. This might be one of the most excited I've been for an episode because of the love I have for black ops two. And, um, pretty much with this leaked rumor, it feels like we're finally getting that game that we thought we were getting back in 2015, you know, with, with everything after BO two, we were expecting this banger follow up to the story and follow up to this and that. Sure. And, um, they went away from that for a couple years and even even I don't I, we won't spoil every conversation but like even with Cold War it didn't really give you that sense of this is a continuation for me at least it felt like they just kind of plugged in Woods and plugged in the people where I was like yeah. oh there that's Woods like we're playing a Black Ops game so that's um, kind of true there was no like finality to yes. uh the the BO1 like and BO2 stuff like yeah technically BO3 is related and is connected to that universe but it, it you know to your point it wasn't that cap off to that whole trilogy um in the same way that we would have expected what i what i'm find really interesting about this thing is that people are thinking in their minds or they're perceiving it as a like bo2 remake or remaster which it isn't or or they're 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 conflating it more with black ops 2 yes. but really we should be saying that they are remaking bo3 you know what I mean? This because is the this official is to Black Ops Two. This is the official BO3. Like, yeah, they're making BO3 two. So there's gonna be BO6 instead of BO5. <laughs> there's gonna be BO whatever this is that's supposed to be BO3. Listen, we're just having fun at this point. You know, as long as they're For good real, games, yeah. I don't care what they're called anymore. Uh huh. That but that that is really funny. It's like we have BO6 apparently, and then after that is gonna be Black Ops Three two. What is I, you know on? what? <laughs> Let's call it that. <laughs> Black Ops 3 2, baby. You that's, know, you know how comment, here. comment down below if you think that's the right title for the next game. I think it is. But I want to go over this tweet. Uh, we have been looking at the same tweet. This this tweet came out May 5th um, in the afternoon. So we're we're two days after. So it's an emergency airdrop. That's what we're calling it. But I I just I don't want to read the whole tweet first. I want to just show you the impressions. I, I know you're looking at it, but 1,000 comments, three, almost 4,000 retweets, 34,000 likes, three and a half million views on this tweet. Mm -hmm. Do you think people like the Black Ops series or have they not figured that out yet? I mean, I mean, people might be kind of fans of Black Ops. You know, it's like it's this really small indie game by a tiny studio. Exactly. Nobody's really ever heard of it. It's got a niche following. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, clearly and, and that is what I've always found wild about Call of Duty is that i mean this has been going on since 2010 the black ops like sub series was never really meant to be this big thing they just made black ops uh when treyarch was making bo1 because like that was the story they wanted to tell and what i also find interesting is i was i was actually going back and watching interviews um in the era of bo1 like watching mark lamia talk about it and stuff and they were like with bo1 we wanted to make a game that takes place during the Cold War, but we didn't want to make the game about the Cold War. Yeah. Because Black Ops really isn't about the Cold War. It's about, like, you know, the secret things going on behind. Uh, Cold War was literally about the Cold War. And, you know, you can do that. But I, I find it interesting that Black Ops was not supposed to be this big, 
long standing thing yeah. you know that, that it just ended up being so successful that they're like why would we ever do anything different yeah and treyarch has never made you know a, a, a product of their studio has never made another call of duty game that hasn't been black ops it just is easy to do at this point it's, it's like the no-brainer it's wild to think about that their last non-black ops title was world at war world at war bro <laughs> literally connected the black ops pretty well the people always kind of consider it was like the sequel to black ops and which obviously it kind of is but sure you know it that's that's what is that 16 17 years ago now or tw well, 2008 mm -hmm. right so 15 what, what's math here? I don't, guys, I play video games for a living. It's 16 years ago, guys. Or, yeah, yeah, right? It's been yeah, a long okay. time, it, bro. It doesn't matter, but it's just been a long time, and that's just... I can't even picture now a Treyarch game not being associated with Black Ops. It's just yeah. the most wild thing to me. But with this tweet, too, I just... World at War is... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was going to say, World at War technically is like in the Black Ops universe, yes. even though it isn't a Black Ops yes. game. But they've they've been continuing... I mean, I guess Modern Warfare has in a way, too. But they've been continuing this universe that they've set in World at War. Uh, and I know it's not quite a, a Black Ops game yes. on the same level. But the point is, they've had this, like, sub-series of a game that was never really supposed to go beyond just one, but it was so successful and good that they would be dumb to do anything else. Yeah. Which is crazy. Well, and, and you can look at the comments on this tweet, you know, bro, not, not me being hyped for a COD in the first time in near a decade, we might be back. Like it's the, it's all positive. And I think we'll get into the details of what they're saying that is going to come with the game here soon. But I just think with MW3, it sucks because I feel like MW19 was, regardless of what you think about it, regardless of what you think about Cold War, I felt like the the COD, maybe I'm just nostalgic, but I feel like the, the COD scene was actually not in a terrible spot. I don't know why. It felt like maybe because I was in the war zone scene and we were getting taken care of. I'm like, man, this is unbelievable. But I feel like it was in a good spot. And then MW2 just dropped Vanguard, MW2, just dropped it so far down and it and now we're just trying to recover like now they're recovering where like if we would have had this game drop after cold war or this game drop after mw19 man i feel like we would have been just like you know in a in a different dimension of of the hype around call of duty but i feel like um it's interesting your perspective um i <laughs> it, it's very enlightening because i feel like we as zombie players we've been on the ropes since bo4 <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna lie that's um, my bad <laughs> no 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 i just it, it's that is totally fine because it's a different perspective and i think that is what this is ultimately for um we we've been kind of on the ropes since post bo4 modern warfare comes out and it feels like the zombies community was totally neglected and i think I would play Modern Warfare 19 a lot, and um, I actually did play my fair share of Warzone, not as much as you, but I I felt like I had been left behind in some sense, yeah. you know, after, after BO4. And then Cold War comes out, and it's like a very good game, and it actually feels refreshing to have a pretty good zombies mode again. Um, and then MW2 comes out, and it's the same deal. It's like, you know, no mention, no acknowledgement of you know zombie fans anything um and then mw3 is like eh, kind of i mean they they did this like half-assed mode and it's like whatever i guess but then you know this next call duty is coming out and the, the interesting thing for zombie players is that uh black ops is gonna get confusing black ops 6 is gonna come out later this year and hopefully be fully loaded with zombies content mm -hmm. and if this is a black ops game Black Ops 3-2 in 2025, I would think that they would also double down on Zombies content again, and maybe they are focusing on the pillars that made yeah. Call of Duty what it was initially. Like we, we talked just about talked about in that the last, last episode. episode. Yeah. But I think that's so important to focus on. I Like I said, I feel like MW3 has done a pretty solid job of spreading the eggs in the basket, and I feel like, okay, again... Campaign did not get taken care of. I totally understand that. That was a studio higher up issue, not the dev itself. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they're really taking care of us. I'm really excited to see what Treyarch does. And do we know if this is Treyarch, this next COD? 
No. So that that is the very interesting thing about this bit. I I have a I have a lot to say on this. So okay. I'll, if, if, well, let, let, let's if dive you will. into it. Let's let, let's get into it now. Let's, let's okay. Let's read the tweet. Let's go into the little bullet points and let's sure. figure out what this thing's all about. Um. So before we get into anything of the game, I think it's worth mentioning that for a while this project uh, apparently again take this all with a grain of salt, but this is allegedly what's going on. Um, this project apparently did not have a lead developer for a very long time. Um, nobody wanted to actually like take this one, um, but like take this one primarily. But it seems like every single studio is working on this one. High Moon, IW, Raven, Sledge, Treyarch. Uh, uh, I don't think Toys for Bob is on this. I don't know who is on it now. Demonware maybe. I'm not sure. But it seems like everybody, every studio is working on this one. Uh, it's not just a Treyarch game. And more so to that point, even if it was just a Treyarch game, what we sort of talked about in the last episode, all of the, um, you know, lead, like, shot callers at Treyarch are not in the studio anymore. At least, like, 90% of them. Dave Anthony, Vonderhaar, Jason Blundell, um, Mark Lamia, like, all those people, n not present. Um, and so it's a very different Treyarch, even if they even if they were um, being the primary developer. Now, I'm not saying new Treyarch can't do a good job, but it is new Treyarch. With that said, it does seem like every single studio to some degree is pitching in to make this one. And that kind of worries me in a way because I feel it won't have that Treyarch polish. You and know identity. it's a Treyarch game. It won't. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have this like sinking feeling that it won't feel like a Treyarch game if everybody gets their hands on it um so i don't know what they're going to do about that but I, I would like treyarch to be the ones that take it over primarily but i'm just not sure they have the time or resources given that they're going to be making it. cod yeah. 2024 right now and also they have to support it throughout the next year yeah i i i i i was thinking about that when you were talking i went man now, now that you're saying it out loud i'm like that's a really good point because i look at this game that we're playing right now, MW3 with Sledgehammer, but Infinity Wars, like the, the big bad wolf hovering over them being like, you can't do that. You can do this. You can do. So yes, in theory, a bunch of studios, all hands on deck. It sounds amazing. You're going, yes, everybody's focused on this one project. We're going to dominate. But then you got to think about the butting of heads. Treyarch wants it this way. And Infinity War may want it this way. Raven may want it that way. And yeah. who's the top dog? Whereas the last game, Infinity Ward could tell Sledgehammer, no, you ain't doing that. You're going to do this. Because we, we've heard the rumor of Pick 10 was supposed to come back and Infinity they shut Ward's it down. No, yeah, apparently. and they shut it down. So if Treyarch's at, at the top, I trust them to kind of help people do their vision, I guess I would say. Mm -hmm. But if they're even with everybody else, I, I do worry about it being too many opinions in the pot and then it gets too many to cooks be, in the kitchen too many out, cooks in the like, kitchen so and i really Infinity War does seem to be at the helm uh so far and i don't know th that that's the problem so i don't know if treyarch is going to be able to um assert i mean it is a black ops title and everybody will associate that with treyarch and i think activision would do themselves a lot of good if they said hey infinity word maybe back off this one a little bit and let Treyarch like like take this one. I but that's the other problem is <laughs> they're already go. making this Call of Duty. <laughs> like, do you think they really have the time and resources to stretch not only post launch yeah, they don't uh, in BO6 to also then do this game? They're gonna have to have like other studios working on it. It's yeah. just not possible. They would have to they would have to rearrange what they're doing. They would have to do BO uh oh my god, it's gonna be confusing. They would have to do BO6 this year, and then Infinity Ward would have to like release their game now. Or, or the after BO6, and then maybe we do this BO2 thing uh, if we wanted to give Treyarch more time. But that's the thing. If this is the release schedule, there is literally no way Treyarch can do both. So Infinity Ward or whoever is going to be in the kitchen. Um, and that's that's that looks to be how it is. Yeah, and, and I don't know about you, but I've, I am starting to be a fan of Sledgehammer. I'm a, I'm a fan of, of Raven Software. The only dev studio right now that I'm just kind of like you can kind of take a break is Infinity Ward. So mm -hmm. I 
if you were to tell me other people were involved in making this and and maybe it was it was Raven and, and Sledge, I'm 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 optimistic. If Infinity Ward has any hand in this, unless we know that Activision has has said to these devs before, you need to whatever you just did, you need to pull back on that. And I think I don't know what game it was, but back in the day, I guess it's Sledgehammer. You know, they wanted to do this. And Activision said, no, 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 you ain't doing that. You're going to do this. So I'm hoping now with the, the feedback that MW2 got, DMZ got, I know DMZ, some people do like DMZ, but I'm talking from like a, I feel like from a diehard COD fan, it just is not a game mode that people were like, yeah, DMZ. Um, so I, and, and the way they managed Warzone 2, I feel like whatever their vision is now, Activision is going to be very, very got a watchful eye on those guys. Like you're not going to do yeah. what you're trying to do. Cause I, like I said, back in MW 19, they created a masterpiece, which I don't know how they did it. Um, to many people, they, they created a masterpiece. And I just think they had, they had the keys to the kitchen after that. Mm -hmm. And, and the keys to every the keys of the Lambo we'll do whatever you want. And now they'll, they'll get reined in a little bit. Cause I think, Sledgehammer was reined in after AW. It's almost like every dev gets like a they get we're going to try and they something. Have to get brought back in a yeah, little. Yeah, we're going to go hey, try remember, something. Do you remember the rumors um about or, or do you remember the leaks about the, the game that Sledgehammer was working on? Uh I believe it was called like Jungle Warfare. It was a Vietnam game. Do you remember that? I do not remember that one. I know of there are some random ones out there, like Infinity War was making like the 300 era at one point. Did you <laughs> yeah. that one? Um, like a, like, yeah, the space they, one they, instead of mm -hmm. MW3. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I mean they kind of did make a space game with Infinite Warfare, and they clearly like from what it sounds like they're not interested in doing Modern Warfare. So I'm curious what Infi I want Infinity War to go just go do their own thing for a bit, and then you know leave what Call of Duty right now is doing alone. I think that would be good. But the point is like Activision has had to step in a few times and being like what you're doing is kind of wild this like vietnam third person call of duty game just isn't gonna fly and then they made sledge cut that one um and so i don't know how they feel about everybody working on this game and because you know we're still at the point where they do tag a primary developer to a game mw3 was a mm -hmm. sledgehammer game mm-hmm MW2 was an Infinity Ward game. Cold War is a Treyarch game. But if everybody's working on this COD 2025 BO2 sequel, Black Ops 3 2 equally, how, like, who, who are they going to actually say made it? I would is it just say be Treyarch. I, I would say Treyarch because I know for me, to. if I, if even if they're lying to me, I'm going Treyarch making it, I'm buying it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm buying well, sir, it for sure. Of, yeah, I think a lot of people think that. And, and also, uh, not only is Treyarch itself very different now, that I also kind of want to get into what the game will look like because of how different it is now. Like, talking uh, talking about it from, like, a campaign and story perspective, if what they're doing, I mean, we can already deduce what they want or the direction they want to take with the game based on its existence, right? BO3, I'm talking the old one we got. This is going to get very confusing. Trango Boom. Trango Boom. We, we, got, we got Dylan Stone. Um, you and I will talk about the BO3 campaign sometime because there's a lot to unpack there. But yeah. um, uh, fun yeah, fact, so fun clearly, fact, I'm gonna be yeah, streaming yeah. that in the next week. I got a, a thumbnail ready for it. I'm gonna revisit. Dude, we should do it, dude. We should do a co-op. Is it co-op co okay. that campaign? Oh, let's yeah. do it then. That would be so funny. <laughs> we could co-op that. I can. I have zero memories of that campaign. I really do. Okay, well, I beat. I would it. love to tell you all about it. The woods, the 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 lady in the white, Trango Boom. There, just, there's a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll stream it. Chat, y'all come watch our stream. I, we will run through the campaign. I have, I have a lot. I'll it. tell you about that. Um, but point is, weird campaign for BO3, and every everybody's biggest complaint in that moment. I remember this clear as day is like, dude, what the hell is this? It's not related to Black Ops Two at all. There was one mention of Menendez, and then that was it. And Black clearly, Ops Three should have been named something else. I sure. think if it, yeah. it's it's already looked at gr like unbelievable. Imagine if it was named something else where you knew going into it, it wasn't going to link up with anything. Yeah, it, it definitely didn't feel like a natural um, end to that 
story in that way. I'm not yeah. just talking about from a campaign perspective. I'm talking about from like the whole universe of Black Ops. It felt very, very over there. Um, but clearly what that did was leave a void in potential storytelling after BO2. There's this like entire hole of, well, we could have done something, you know, with directly after BO2 or something. Uh, and that's actually what BO4, I think, that's what BO4 tried to do. I don't know if you know that. Um, so bear with me for a second. BO4 sure. originally was going to be a sequel to Black Ops 3. Originally. Um, it was going to be post BO3. And then the BO4 we have now, even though it doesn't really have a story mode, they have like the specialist, um, uh, like their journals and everything like that. But BO4 now, that universe is technically a prequel to BO3. So in a way, BO4 is the BO2 sequel. I, it's so confusing. Yeah. But clearly, like, again, that's not connected to the, the, the BO2 stuff that was going on. There's a void there. And I think they're like, everybody loves this story, and we haven't actually properly concluded that stuff. But I don't know how they can do it now because they, I mean, for a lot of complicated reasons, they don't have... Um, you know, the original voice actors for stuff like Frank Woods. Um, sadly, the voice actor of Raul Menendez mm -hmm. passed away. Just recently. Um, yeah, just very recently. Um, so I, I, number one, I don't think you could do the storytelling in the same way because Dave Anthony and Jason Blundell are not writing the story. And also, you just don't have a lot of the people and raw material that made those old campaigns. It's just been so long. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do? That's the question. Well, I mean, I'm looking at the tweet. It says set in 2030 um, and a direct sequel. So I, I, I feel like they're going to somehow tie the campaign in, regardless of who's writing it and the mm -hmm. actors that are available. We know Call of Duty. I know Modern Warfare is a soft reboot, but they don't care about hiring new voice actors. They don't care about hiring new actors. They'll they'll sure. do it. Um so yeah, I, I would like for it to continue. I, I I don't really know how that looks. I'm luckily I'm not a writer, so I don't have to really worry about that. But I, I truly for me, you could get rid of the Black Ops three and Black Ops four campaign sequel story and just act like they didn't even exist. I I'd be I'll be okay with that. Like don't I don't worry <laughs> they about could it. Exist in their own little you're like, not, pocket yeah, Black you're not, Ops they, universe. They almost do anyway for me anyway. Like those two sure. games, I don't associate them with the World at War, Black Ops one, Black Ops two, like storyline sure even yeah, if they're me, somehow me connected and this is doing this and doing that I, I almost treat them as like hey this is this era of call of duty trying something different we're leaving that over there um bo3 and bo4 feel like their own universe whereas world at war and bo2 feel um like they Synced have a thread up. connecting them yes yeah so I'm down for, and then Cold War kind of feels like this odd. Cold War child is its own too. pocket dimension of yeah. yeah. So you know, it's almost like, hey, let's just not worry about those titles, and let's and let's bring that timeline that everybody loved. We drop down a little bit, but then let's 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 come back and 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 link up to it. So I would be down with with bringing some characters back and all that, even if they're different voice actors. I I don't know, man. I just. I think that that's what they should do personally. I'm so curious how they're going to approach the story. And, um, you know, we won't, we'll avoid speculating because it'd be kind of pointless, but I just like, I don't see people being able to like, I, I don't see different writers being able to, what would be a proper conclusion to yeah. the BO3 story. Like if Dave Anthony, Dave Anthony didn't write BO3, that was Dan Bunting and Jason Blundell. If Dave Anthony and Jason had, been tasked to do a proper cap off to bo2 in a let's say proper bo3 i think it would look very different to what bo3 actually was um i think that's pretty obvious but maybe they're well, actually working on it but it's under wraps and nobody knows it's a can secret you <laughs> it's can a you secret imagine? i know that i know that to not be the case unfortunately yes, i would love to you know you that but we can all have hope we can all have it would hope. be so cool um but yeah I, I i don't know i just think that it's even even if it is a direct sequel to BO2, I would just, you know, try to rein in everyone's ex expectations that it is going to be, it's going to be told in a very different way, even if it's the same raw material. Because, like, okay, you think about this. Uh, this is something I just thought of. Cold War, when I reviewed that game, I concluded that the, 
because a lot of people were were claiming, oh, Bo, uh, uh, Cold War is just a soft reboot. Mm-hmm. It's a copy of Black, of Bo One. Yep. It really isn't though. When you when you look at it more structurally, it is besides like the sort the aesthetic and time period. It's almost nothing like Bo One at all. It's, I agree. It's actually more like Black Ops Three. Um. And and if you want to know why, you know, you can watch my Cold War review. But basically, the Cold War campaign is more like BO3 than it is BO1. And I would imagine that this Call of Duty 2025, this BO2 Part 2 sequel, um, is probably going to be more like, I, I, I don't know. Are they going to do it? try to do it more like BO1 or BO2? Or is it going to be more like Cold War? Um, I just think it's going to be basically my point is going to be very different storytelling, even if it's using the same material. So we'll see. I'm excited. I, I'm, I, I'm I was hopefully just say, curious, but we'll, I'm, we'll, we'll see. I'm excited just to play a campaign again, man. I, I, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed um, streaming. OK, the MW3 campaign was awful, but yeah, I did enjoy. I did a stream on the day it came out on YouTube. And we had the hype behind it. People are excited. You know, we're watching the campaign. I was like, man, this is this is an enjoyable moment. There was no rush to go play MP or Warzone or this or that because they do the week thing early. So I, I'm I'm just excited to play two Call of Duties in a row that have a campaign that will hopefully be four or five hours. Where as the last couple have just been mid, as they say, and and a and a, a fun four to five hours. Hopefully, that yes. would be great. Yes. You know, yes. That would so, be wonderful. I don't know. But anyway, for 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 multiplayer, um, the tweet says mix of new maps and remastered maps and then the classic pick 10, which I believe is rumored to be coming back in the next COD as well. Right. We we could be going back to the pick 10 for the future now. Um, I, I didn't hear about pick 10 for COD 2024, but I would believe it. I thought um, I saw that the- somewhere. I could be wrong, though. That it may it may have been circuit that might that might be the case. Um, okay. The thing with the thing with MP is like, I feel like they saw the success that um, marketing the old MW two two thousand nine maps had for MW three, and maybe it's a similar situation where they're gonna say, um, we're giving you a bunch of let's say like Bo one MP remastered maps on launch. And maybe some BO2 ones thrown into the mix. Uh, and then we're going to develop original maps, you know, as the year goes on. Um, that's a formula I feel like I I personally liked anyways. Um, I understand that uh, 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 people got a little bit bored with the old MW2 maps being, being in the game. I totally understand that. But also that is kind of their selling point. Yeah. But I like the fact that they also went out of the way to develop brand new maps for the rest of the year. Yes. I, I do think there should be some new maps at launch, personally. I I think with the MW3, I don't know if you said this or somebody I knew sent, said this. Uh, it's something to think about when you play a game. Sure, if you're a big MW2 fan and you love that game and then you played the maps again, you, you know, you're falling in love with the game all over again. But the one thing that it adds is everybody gets better quicker. So... Mm-hmm. Everybody knows the maps, you know where to go, they know where the spots are, you know the jump spots, you know the Easter eggs. So there's not really this discovery period where it yeah. felt like MW3 off the rip was sweaty. Everything was sweaty because yeah. we had everything we knew. So I'm totally down for BO2 maps in the beginning. I think it would be great to, even if they wanted to do like bring six of them in and then six sure. new ones. And then hybrid. halfway through, you drop another three, and then you drop another three new ones. I know that's asking a lot, but, you know, just a different style of how you... I think they did something good this year, bringing in a bunch of new maps, and they've all been good. Like, Sledgehammer's maps this year, I don't have one that I don't like. They've all been good, in my opinion. So, the, but, I, but to your point, though, they said that... Uh, it, we were talking about it in a previous episode where I'm like... MW3 was super sweaty right off the bat, not because they like took the SBMM lever and did this. Mm-hmm. It was because we had maps from 2009 that everybody who's a hardcore Call of Duty player is playing on day one. And these are maps that we are already intimately familiar with. Yes. And we're using weapons from the previous Modern Warfare 2 that are already ranked up, have attachments, optimized for the meta, etc. You know, like 
and and if they do a a clean break with with uh bo6 where we don't have carry forward weapons and all the stuff like sure Please. we may know the maps we may we i always thought carry forward was kind of a bad idea to begin with but that was just my opinion but uh if we have a clean break with bo6 yeah i mean there will be a little bit less of that discovery period where we will already be familiar with the maps. We'll be good at them. We'll know how to play them. But if there is a blend of some novelty, then I think that could help um, extend that lifespan a little bit. And also, if they drip feed the old classics, I don't like the word drip feed because it has bad connotations, but let's say they um, time gate their release yeah. of some of the older classics in BO2, maybe alongside new maps down the year that would get people to return to the game i think as well that would be a very effective way to like get people back on you know you bro uh um oh my god what's that map turbine is coming back in this season you know like i want to go play that yeah um they could kind of have it both ways hopefully because they kind of like did it all at once in mw3 and said every mw2 map this game is basically mw2 remastered but then it's not as the year goes on. I think they've uh, learned from that. I think that's why this tweet says a mix of new maps and remastered. I think they've realized you can't just drop all of the maps on launch and get you, you're excited for three weeks. And then sure. it's like, okay, when's then the you go, bro? Favela plays weird. Yeah, now. <laughs> dude, I, I, this is a wild opinion. I love that map. I did not realize it was so heavily disliked by people until this game came out back in the day. Mm. That was one of my favorite MW2 maps. And then when it came out in the beta, I'm like, this is such a good map. And then all the people are saying, worst map ever. I'm I'm going, whoa, I, did, I missed the mark on this one, I guess. I, I, I really like this. Is that I think I've seen people say, that, and I kind of agree a little bit, is that Favela plays very different in the new systems than it did back in the day. I think like the flow and just pacing because you can very jump different. and slide uh, move around all quick and get you the interact points. With the map very different yeah, yeah yeah so it, it feels jump. different not that i dislike it but i i get what people are saying but yeah i mean that's the point is like will these maps play the way that you remember them playing in bo2 i mean and, and i don't even know why we're making a bo2 comparison because it's more like bo3 yeah. are they going to bring bo3 maps to this who knows? Yeah, I just I'm I'm really excited for this one. I know it's the year after already, but that's part of the. Are COD you excited fun, to man. go back to pick ten? I picked, oh oh my gosh, dude! I when we did our Black Ops two stream and I said uh, I'm gonna go get some lunch or whatever. I got lunch and then I got back on and played Black Ops two on Plutonium for a little bit multiplayer. Mm -hmm. It is just such a it is amazing how making a game simple makes it just it. It was so fun. The game was so hmm. fun 12 years later, and I'm not just gassing it up because of nostal nostalgia. Like, not even nostalgia. There was no nostalgia on the Easter eggs on zombies. I, I sure. was having fun. And I don't know. It just, I, I played a game. I, I dropped into like Raid or something, and you got the AN94, and you got two attachments, man. Two. Yeah. It, it's the foregrip, and it's a red dot or foregrip and, and quick draw. And I'm like, you know, if you got the quick down aim sight, you got penalized because you got a little bit more kick. And, um, you know, you couldn't reload as fast. But if you do fast reload, your gun's going to kick still. But then you got to put a red dot on it. It's like this. You had a clear, like clear advantages and trade offs in the clear advantage. And trade -off. I you, love you know that you saying that you're going to put a lot of um, uh, create a class or not create a class. So you're going to put a lot of gunsmith youtubers out of business <laughs> well I, dude i was one of them i was i i used to do nothing but war zone class setups and i went dude this is so mindless it's so it's just so cut and dry and i think that's part of the cod cycle right now that's gotten so people go Tired. the game is boring well yeah it is because you don't do any you don't do any um what's the word i'm looking for testing yourself you know I'm not discrediting any of these people. I love these dudes. I've met multiple times, but like, you'll just go and look up a J God video. You you sure. don't go on a, uh, uh, get a gun and go, let me try these random attachments on and see if, see what's going on. J God, what's the new HRM build. Okay. Put it on my gun. Done. Rank up my yeah. guns. In mo it's become very robotic. Okay. Log sure. on HRM. Unlock it. Go to shipment. Unlock it all the way. Go get J God, J -God video. Tell me what to put Plug on. in the attachments. Play Warzone Rebirth. Games are super sweaty because everybody's using the same gun. Why is the game so sweaty? Well, back in the day, 
People were using RPGs. They were using shock charges and riot shields. They were using sniper rifles. They were using target LMGs in a corner with Nuketown. Yes, some of these styles made you super angry, but it also gave the game variety. And the game, Call of Duty has zero variety right now. Zero. You go watch a Rebirth Island stream, get rid of the camera. Get rid of the camera. It'll be the same exact shot on every single person. <laughs> Same and exact not shot. That there wasn't like create a class of videos back in the day either, but it's different now where you're unlocking. Fired up, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like that was good. I, I, I honestly, I agree with like all of that. Essentially, um, my my whole thing was like, I think part of it is due to just the rise of like internet content, and yeah. it becomes a lot more accessible to like, and, and also gaming's become a lot more hyper competitive. So people want to know like, what do I run? But also, at the same time, it was like, yeah, um, with when I have 8 billion attachments to choose from, too much choice, that's overwhelming. I'm just going to look up J-God and, and do what he tells me to do. Yeah. Whereas, like, if I have, I don't know, 10 different attachments, I'm like, all right, realistically, I can put on 10 different ones and try them out in a match and see see what I like. You know, it, you're not, you're not um, paralyzed into not doing anything when there's only 10 choices. You become paralyzed when there's 8 million choices for every attachment variant. Yes. That's the biggest uh, hole in the gunsmith system, in, in my eyes. Gunsmith mixed with strict, strict, strict skill-based matchmaking. Mm -hmm. that's, like your, that's like your core elements of right now creating a bad time. I mean, dude, I go on here and I look on Twitter every day and I go, I feel like every Warzone creator does not enjoy the game. I don't know what I don't know what it is about it, and I don't really enjoy the game right now. The Warzone side of things, I just don't. I don't know what happened, but I think part of it has even, to do with the like attachments and stuff. stuff. I, 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 you know, the the map is great. They did a good job of bringing it back. It's just, I think it's just the Warzone. I mean, the Warzone's been out five years now, four, four, five, and um. I don't know. I feel like it needs something. It needs a, it, the resurgence is definitely where it needs to be. But even now resurgence, I would be down with some, some sort of variable in it. Like where can we get another variable Add another variable? I think people were talking about Fortnite the other day, how they did a really good job of the game got so sweaty and then they brought in no build. So it's like yeah. call of duty needs to bring in that war zone thing that creates like bring some casuals back. Sure. Um, I don't know what that is. That's not yeah. That that's kind of like what it seemed like Blackout almost wanted to do, but that we'll we'll, we'll get to that another time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Staying on this BO2 sequel, I think MP has high prospects. <clears throat> I've actually liked a lot of Treyarch's like you know more recent MPs. Cold War is a good one. Um, and even though again many of the geniuses at Treyarch that made those older games. MP so good, you know, playing BO2 is like, you, you, you know who made that. And it's like that, that kind of, that coming together and that sort of like cook mentality, I hope uh, still exists. And I, I think we could get a lot of that. I think it'll be very fun in its own right. The one thing I am a bit concerned about, to tell you the truth, is I am not 1000% sure, but it seems that at least COD 2024 and possibly this next game are going to be on like the modern warfare engine. Ugh. That's well, reportedly that's what's going on. Actually, let me take that back because the modern warfare engine, it, it, I like the engine, whatever they did in MW2. I don't know what happened. Cause I read somewhere when I was doing my MW video, I read that MW19 and MW2, I think, are the exact same engine or a very similar engine. But why the heck do they play so different? So I, I'm not worried about that from a perspective of... Because weren't the old Modern Warfares and Black Ops on the same engine too, but they just made them feel... Like, how does that... Do you know how that works? I don't. Um, Not, not to the depth that I would consider um, me myself to be, like, well-versed on, but... yeah. From what I understand, like the the older Call of Duty games ran on, I, I don't remember what it's called. I was actually looking at it the other day. It's a very archaic engine. You can look at it compared to like Unreal Engine now, and it's like 
it's like looking at like geometry. It's it's odd. Whereas like looking at Unreal, it's like looking at Premiere. Okay. Um, if you you know if you edit, but it's a very archaic engine. And I think with Modern Warfare 19, they did something different. And I know MW2 is on the same engine, but they, I think what you're getting at is they made the like player mechanics and um the way that you fundamentally interact from a first person perspective with the game very different. Um, and that's why it feels different to Modern Warfare 2019, but it is on the same engine. Cold War, I believe, is on a different engine yeah, to yeah. MW19 and Cold War, but I, I or, I'm so. sorry, MW2. Um, but it seems, from what I've heard, COD 2024 is not on the Cold War engine. It's actually on the Modern Warfare ones. Okay. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I don't. I don't know exactly about the old old Call of Duty games, but as far as like from mw19 and on uh cold war is on its own thing and i think cod 2024 will be on the modern warfare engine and also if everybody is working on cod 2025 i would just assume that they would work on the modern warfare engine imagine yeah. a yeah i mean i, I think just, that's how it would be i just think look at the difference between how mw2 and mw3 plays that's the same engine but like so i mm -hmm. I, I guess i'm not as worried about that as i thought i mean i think if Obviously, they can they can do some spinning around and change You're the way that game plays. More worried about like the choices they make in terms of yes. you know player mechanics. I whatnot. like the guns up mentality that Black Ops feel like it's always had. I feel like the aim down sight, the movement has always felt good to me. Um, you know, I'd be interested to see how sprinting and all that works. Are they going to continue the the tactical sprint? Are they going to fade on that? You know, because Cold War didn't really have that they just had the the normal sprint correct and then mm -hmm. the slide so i don't know i i i um we'll see we'll see i think but, it comes down to player mechanics but yeah i and and to to your point i think player mechanics are the most important thing for me too but also the other thing you lose with the modern warfare engine if if they're going to be black ops games is you lose like maybe not totally but to some extent you might lose that like treyarch art style that patented uh, yes. like you have to keep that plasticky look yeah i understand it's not realistic but bro i'm not like i'm not a, i'm not like a a, a diehard realism guy man. i just don't care about that you when know when did we like play call that, of duty to be realistic uh, when, when did that when did that in. discussion come in because i never remember people being able to trick shot off a high rise and mw2 being a realistic thing 360 sure. as they fall out of the skyscraper and it's like modern warfare and Infinity Ward games specifically have always had a more, let's call it a realistic look. They've been Tone, more, yeah, yeah. They've been more grounded. Um, but, but the Treyarch games aren't grounded. Are, yeah, the games aren't grounded, but they're you know the aesthetic would, tr would try to be a bit more grounded. But Treyarch games always had that like cartoony, um, almost like over the top like plasticky look. Yeah, and I sure. think that is like and not even a criticism. I think that's like I love part it. and parcel of their identity. Right, colorful. Like, I, be, yeah po colorful poppy vibrant you name it um that is very much their thing and they would be doing themselves a big disservice by getting rid of that and what kind of freaks me out and i'm not totally sure if this is valid but you think about for, for zombie people you think about the look of modern warfare zombies like uh, for sure you know also sledgehammer game also infinity war game whatever but when i think about like the stuff that Treyarch made in that game, it still looks like an Infinity Ward game. I'm I'm thinking about like the Dark Ether stuff in MWZ. It looks like an Infinity Ward game, even though yeah, I'm using my Wonder Waff. I have my ray gun. It looks very I I, I totally to agree. And I'm like uh, I I I don't know. I would like I like that look that Cold War has. I like the look that BO3. Even I was gonna say I love BO3. The look of BO4. Even if I don't love the game, even if I don't love the game of BO4, I love the look of all of those games. Yeah, it's the, um, it's the, I'm telling you, man, it's like the color and saturation, I feel like is the main thing I think of. Like, I, I think of the Black Ops 3, like, round change, the ammo mm -hmm. being that light blue, um, mm -hmm. you know, just that simple stuff, the, the, what is that? The flame thing from the first map, not the flame thing, but like your thing you would activate to become like, it was just all very orange. It was very bright orange. Great um, art direction, like great. Phenomenal. Art direction. So, um, okay. So that I just, I hope they maintain that. I, I, I just don't see why they don't, I don't see how they, I don't see how they don't do that, but 
it just might be harder to do on the more like muted looking modern warfare engine that yeah. that's what i would describe the look of zombie stuff in in mw3 as is like yeah it looks like treyarch stuff but it's like muted a little bit and i want it to be like poppy and vibrant again hopefully that's the case we'll see well we've we've got two chances to get it right with cod 2024 and cod 2025 yeah. And to, you know, briefly touch on zombies real quick. I was going to say, um, what's your, the, the, the most important line for you here says round base <laughs> zombies, round base maps. You so know, you know how we do it. Um, yeah. So, uh, I remember a, a tweet. I won't say who, but I remember a tweet and it was like, guys, I think Treyarch is no longer making round base maps ever. And Kevin drew the, uh, director for zombies at Treyarch was like, what a night. Like, no. We might like have to find. We might have to find that tweet. It's so funny, but um, <laughs> yeah, the, he was just like, um, yeah, that's not happening. Like, there will be round base maps. Clearly, there will be round base maps in COD twenty twenty four, and obviously, they're going to do it in twenty twenty five. The the thing I'm thinking about is like, so there, there is a lot of complicated history with Zombies Chronicles two, basically the remastered maps that never happened. I could talk for literally three hours about that subject alone, but I won't. Um, what I will say is somewhere out there, there are either work in progress plans or maybe even full on finished maps of these older. Uh, I I'm, I'm thinking specifically transit die rise buried uh, call of the dead mm. and maybe some others, but these were maps that were already developed and they were actually in bo4 in blackout they were clearly made but they were never released in any black ops title and people are like oh are they going to release transit remastered in uh bo6 they could do that or they could save something like that for cod 2025 also granted yeah. transit itself would be very different no matter which way you release it in this game this year or in this bo2 sequel but they could save those actual bo2 maps for that project if they really wanted to because i know they they got them on deck and they could very well um make that their selling point if they wanted to and i could see a world where uh bo6 is continuing um cold war from a zombies perspective and they're continuing that whole arc and then in the bo2 sequel bo3 2 they are more lenient on releasing maybe these actual old BO2 remasters that never got remade. That could be a possibility. Yeah. And I'm excited that that, you know, I think that's that's interesting. Um, I don't know what they would have done if Chronicles 2 had already come out, if they would have re-released remastered round base maps. I don't know. But, I mean, they've got a lot of great things to pull from. The other thing I want to point out really quick with Zombies is the original BO2, and I know I guess this is BO2, we're talking more about BO3, so not really the same. But the original BO2, I think what was so good about that entire experience is like you had a map like Transit that was, you know, Jimmy Zielinski's chaotic brain yeah. incarnate. And then you had Mob of the Dead, which is Jason Blundell and his very like direct to the point, uh, very like straightforward progression of a zombies map. You have these two like very different feeling maps, not only from a aesthetic and tonal perspective but just how they play they're very different and while they can kind of clash in in certain ways i also feel like bo2 made it so that there was something for everyone if you didn't like transit and you hated the way that played mm -hmm. mob of the dead might be more for you if yep. you hated the 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 straightforwardness of mob of the dead you might like something like a a, a die rise or transit where it's very sandboxy yes and if COD 2025 is being developed under one singular vision. That might be good. That's what BO3 did, um, the real BO3. But you you won't get that that sort of like that melding together of two unique design philosophies into one game. I think it's going to be one director, and I think it will be a very straightforward formula, which can work. That's what BO3 did, and that is best case scenario yeah. is we get a formula that works consistently for zombies in that year. yes that would be great that's all i ask for give me a formula that works and listen i'm gonna throw it out there i'll take a buried remastered you know i'll take it man 
I keep saying one of my favorite maps of all time was buried. So if they bring mm -hmm. that back, I actually like the point that you made with like bringing those maps back for Black Ops 6 and it's like the sequel and then you're playing, you're thinking it's right after BO2, which it is. And then you're getting some BO2 zombies maps. It kind of fits the the narrative there. I kind of like that. It feels like it works a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not all of them or maybe all of them. You know, I feel like uh, they, they got the tools to do that, I would assume, you know? So... Um yeah, and, and these maps have been um, talked about or at least in development for quite some time, and I know they're probably just sitting around somewhere, and I would imagine they're just looking for the right time to release them. That could be this year or next year, but I think one of these years will, will be the case. Do you think that from a, a ca more casual zombies perspective that if they had announced Transit is coming back, do you think that would... I'm back, baby. Do you think do you think that would do it? See, I know transit is not looked at up like pretty well from, I feel like from the hardcore zombies. I don't know what it was about that map, man. I loved it. I loved mm -hmm. that zombies map. It, it was stupid. It was, it was chaotic. It was all over the place. It was not very organized, but that's what made it kind of fun. That's right? what made like it fun, that. man. I will never forget leaving my friends on that, on that, on that bus, man. That is mm -hmm. one of a, a key memory in my brain memory for you. is going, Hey guys, uh, see ya, you know? And then all of a sudden they're scrambling and they're sprinting through. And it's just, I don't know, man, that was such a, it's, That's it's again, it's, that, it was fun. It's that disorganized, chaotic, uh, brand of zombies that Jimmy Zelinsky had that kind of made that fun. Again, it wasn't for everybody, but to your point, I would agree like co-op transit is insanely fun. And that's part of it is because it is broken. Yes. I just don't see them remaking transit and not fundamentally changing it because it needs a lot of work. And I don't think they could make a more modern game without they, they, they couldn't help, but fix it up. Yeah. And I know they will. And maybe that will make it feel very different. I don't know, but could still be very fun in its own way and i and i hope it will be but i mean just from the on paper standpoint alone it sounds like a pretty good package the the entire game yep i i am uh i'm excited man i'm excited for the future of call of duty i know it sounds like a broken record but sue me man i love call of duty no matter what i it's, i have a sickness and i will admit it <laughs> so two two back to back black ops games in a row for, from my perspective, doesn't sound too bad. No, I like the sound of that. No. Um, I I just hope they they can do it well and do these games justice. And besides my biggest worry, which is the fact that there may be too many cooks in the kitchen for COD twenty twenty five, I hope somebody, particularly Activision, is like, "Yo, lads, like take a back seat. We're gonna have Treyarch. Maybe hire on some more help at Treyarch. Maybe yeah. that's what they gotta do. I, I know I they always have said him. that. I, mean, I see them tweet we, all the time. We're making enough money here, you know. Like, yeah. And I see Treyarch tweeting all the time. We're hiring, so hopefully they're trying to build a bigger staff. Maybe and, they should bring you in there for the zombie storyline. Treyarch, hit my line. There hey, you if you're a developer <laughs> watching this podcast, he's hit got a line. he's got a I couple got good you. ideas. You know what I mean? I got you. <laughs> um, you know, we can save Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, that's that's what we do on this podcast, Chad. That's going we just dark save Call of Duty. Every episode's a new way to save Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I think generally it is something that I know will bring back casual players. I think it's something that will sound good. It's like a BO2 sequel, BO3 part two. I don't know what they're going to call it, but I think just conceptually it'll work for a lot of people. It's got me intrigued. I know it's got you intrigued, and I, I'm looking forward to where it goes. I, I think that's a great way to end it right there, man. Uh, I chat commenters, subscribers, are you ready for a Black Ops 2 sequel? Finally, it has been 12 years, but it might be finally happening. Allegedly, um, allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. So quickly again, thank you for the support on the podcast. We're going to wrap here. Uh, Spotify is approaching 100 reviews. So keep reviewing it over there. If you haven't done it yet, if you're listening and you haven't hit the five star, it takes literally 0.1 seconds to do that. So do that for us. Same thing with Apple. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, like the video. Every video chop we've been talking about, every podcast is, has been doing better, 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 better. So you guys are doing a good job of, I guess, continuing to watch. And we appreciate that. And you're also probably sharing it. So we appreciate that. And the feedback in the comments has been good. We are working on getting him a camera. 
Okay. We are working we're on it. HD up, chat. We, we we see the comments. Okay, we're working on it. Listen, we're trying to you know we're trying to get a sponsor for the podcast, and if the sponsor gets a camera for free, listen, we're responsible adults here. We want we want to try to save money when we can, so that's what we're doing. Um, it's it is very. Uh, I'll add one thing. It feels like very old YouTube, where like I would only be able to upgrade my like I would upgrade my equipment when I could afford to do so. Like with the content that I was making, is like you know I got my first yeah. microphone, and then when when I start Step to make up. a little bit of money on YouTube, I would get a new microphone. Yeah, you know? that's so what we're doing. We're we're kind of treating this channel like it's a brand new channel. I mean, it is literally, and it, it kind of feels fun to have that same like progression and and that scaling up of quality and. I think if you're watching at this point, we are in the primitive stages of the podcast, but it, the good news is it will only climb higher and higher in quality. We're going to have some very exciting mm. announcements very soon. Um, and yeah, I think this podcast is going places. At 3,000 subscribers, Chop gets a new camera. That's the that's the bet. Okay. <laughs> Love um, that. Anything else? I think I'm good. Yeah, um, make sure y'all go follow us on our personal channels if you want to go watch, you know, our 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 own content and can, uh, listen to us continue to yap. But otherwise, we will see you for another episode very soon. All right, y'all. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bravo Six. Going dark. <laughs>